I want to be punished. I want to be held to such a high standard that when I sin, I have to make up for it, right? This is why the Catholic Church is a manly church. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, my question is, do I need to be a part of a church? I realize in order for me to grow spiritually, I need to be a part of a spiritual community, like a church. I've been looking in and off for three years now. To be honest, the only one near me that seems decent is a Hispanic church. Other than that, I pray with my family, but I don't think that's enough. Do you recommend that men should have an active spiritual life in order to be a true king? Meaning being a part of a local body of believers. I'm Christian and I really feel that void in my life. So I'm looking for a good serious church to be a part of because it's hard to find a good church. So I get discouraged and stop looking. You're not the only one, bro. I just want to acknowledge that I, or admit that I too struggle in this way because I find that most of these communities are highly feminized, right? And the early church fathers and like the men on Mount Athos, Christianity was a masculine religion at, at, in the beginning. It's a patriarch, patriarchal religion, right? Just like all the Abrahamic religions are until they become perverted. I think the Muslims are the only ones that are retaining their patriarchal attitude about things. But from what some of Muslim friends tell me, Things are starting to change very rapidly because the rot from the West is making its way into their culture, right? So we're all kind of suffering in that way because there's no spiritual space for men to grow. There's no sacred space for men. The church was once a sacred space for men. And that's why I talk about these monks on Mount Athos. They still retain it to this day. There are remnants in some places, right? In, in the Orthodox movement. And even in the Catholic movement, there's a traditional movement within the Catholic faith. And as a part of the traditional liturgy, they don't have all these women, right? And when you don't have women in politics, you don't water down what's real, right? We always make space for women, but it's never really the same. Think about it this way. Like when you were kids, when we were kids and we play sports, remember like you'd be picking teams, right? You and your boys, you know, you're going out to play uh, kickball. Well, boys don't play kickball playing like uh, stickball or basketball or football, something like that. And it's cool. It's fun. Like you're picking teams. It's you, but then the girls come and the girls want to play too. And you want to be nice and you want to let them play. But the rules change a little bit because the girls are there, right? You can't hit as hard. You got to be a little bit gentle or right. You got to be a little bit more. You got to be nice. You got to be nice because girls are there. This is how women ruin spaces for men. Because when a girl is there, men change. Oh, you got to be a little bit nicer because the girls are here. Oh, don't say that because the girls are here. Oh, you got to make way for the girls. That's nice. That's great. That's okay at home. But when men are gathering in places that have been traditionally for men, like the workplace and various aspects of the church, it's for a good reason. It's not sexist. It's acknowledging our differences. Why do women want to always be a part of our spaces? Men don't go chasing after women's spaces. My wife goes and plays bunker with her friends, or they used to anyway. And it's like a it's like a kitty cat circle where they circle around and chatting, right? I don't want to have anything to do with that. Men don't go into women's places. Do you notice that? The, men didn't want to go to the Girl Scouts. Men don't go to the Girl Scouts. There was no push for men to go into the Girl Scouts, even though they got the best cookies in town. No, the girls wanted to become Boy Scouts, right? Why is that? Why is that? Why is it that men never want to infiltrate women places, but women want to infiltrate men places? Just something to think about. And so I've struggled as well. I've struggled as well in, in finding solid masculine places for spiritual worship. It's not easy. In fact, I'm not sure it's available. And so I, I had this kind of question myself just yesterday. It's funny that you asked this. And I asked myself, why do, I, why do I go to church? What will keep me tied to the church? And I tell you this, that the church God established is there to disseminate, to provide for us to maintain a state of grace, through the sacraments that he's provided. 
This is why the Catholic Church is the only church that makes sense to me. The Catholic Church has fallen. It's got its fallen ideals. We have our fallen pope. We got a whole lot of fallen problems and ideals. But one thing that the Catholic Church has always done throughout all of history was create saints. Saints come from the Catholic Church. They don't come from anywhere else. The Catholic and the Orthodox Church. All the newfangled Protestant churches do not produce saints. You know why they don't produce saints? Because there's no accountability. When you're a part of the sacramental life of the Catholic Church, you have accountability. This whole idea, that which is, which is very uh, postmodern Protestant, that all I need to do is say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and I'm saved forever, is not true. You do have to work. A lot of Protestants say to me, Elliot, the Catholic cha cha uh, faith is fake because... You, it, because it's works based. Do you think you can get anything in this world without work? Can you get anything in this world without work, much less the grace of God? Especially since you've lived a life of sin and have been an affront to the Lord in all of your decisions. All of the fucked up things I have did and said in my life, and I don't have to make reparations for it. I don't have to work actively to be in the grace of God and go to heaven. All I have to do is say these magic words. You know what that does to men? It makes us weak and disinterested. The Catholic Church offers sacraments. And in order to receive the sacraments, you need to be in a state of grace. In order to be in a state of grace, you have to be living rightly. You can't be sinning. And if you are sinning, you have accountability. You go to confession. You confess your sins. You receive your punishment, right, which is your penance, right? I want to be punished. I want to be held to such a high standard that when I sin, I have to make up for it, right? This is why the Catholic Church is a manly church. It's a manly church because it holds you accountable. Only warriors can do it. It's very effeminate to think that you can get away with sinning and being degenerate, but because you say this special prayer that it's all been wiped out, it's not. It's a lie. And it's what's destroyed Christendom and the West. The West has failed as a result of this. So when you ask me if you need to be a part of a church, I say yes in this regard. I may be right or wrong, maybe I'm not a nice guy, that's not my point here, but that is what I have to say that it's not because of the community. It's not because of the priests, because a lot of the priests are, right? It's not because of the people, because a lot of people, they voted for Biden, right? You gotta get, you gotta understand, it's not about the community, it's about the sacraments. The community is great, if you can find a community that's nice, but you have to be a part of the sacramental life. This is why I actively seek, seek a church and I'm having a hard time, but I know that I just have to settle Right? I have to settle. I know that doesn't sound good, but it's not settling. It's making a stance. It's saying, okay, this is where I'll receive my sacraments. This is where I'll confess my sins and be held accountable. And this is where I'll receive my penance and do what's right. This is where I'll receive the Holy Eucharist and be in firm communion with the Lord. Right? This is where the sacramental life will happen. Baptism, marriage, right? And these were all established by Christ. If you go to a church that doesn't have a sacramental life, doesn't have a liturgy, then you, they're just making it up. They're just making it up. They have rock music and, you know, the guy is real cool and he gives a good talk. And then they have women preachers that come up. That's, that don't do it. That don't do it for me. That's not the right way. That's not the way it was established. Right. So you do need to be you do need to get yourself involved with the sacramental life of the church. And if you're not Catholic, well, pfft, I don't know what to tell you, because there are no sacraments in most of the other churches. Some of them, they do have make believe sacraments, which is cool. But if you want to receive the sacraments as Christ established it in his church on the rock, that is Peter. Then you find a Catholic church that allows that to happen. You don't have to love the priest. You don't have to love the people. When I say love, I mean, have charity, charity in your heart, but meaning that you agree with them. You don't need to agree with them, right? Love, love, but you don't have to agree, right? 
a lot of the things they do are and, and say and the people that are around like they're they're just you know catholic in name only but that's okay forgive them forgive them have charity in your heart right like that kind of love like look like i, just, I forgive you i understand it's hard it's, most most people fail because they just don't know their faith I'm a baby Catholic, but I watch YouTube videos all day long teaching me about the faith. I'm actively learning about it. That's why I have so much to say. Not because I know this stuff, because I'm learning. I'm a practitioner. I'm trying stuff out like you. Do you recommend that men should have an active spiritual life in order to be a true king? Have an active spiritual life, yes. Make a commitment to that which represents or that which... Uh, that which fulfills your active spiritual life, right? And that is through the sacraments and prayer. First and foremost, it's through the sacraments and through prayer. Your active spiritual life could simply be praying the rosary every day, right? Christ and the church have given us prayers. Prayer, I don't want to say is rote, but they're formulaic. There are many formulaic prayers that have been given to us by the saints and by the early church fathers and by Christ himself, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Say that prayer every day. Say that prayer every day. That's a part of your spiritual life. A part of what ha we've been tricked in our culture is uh, in this movement called emotionalism, right? Where people think unless they're getting an emotional high from something that nothing's happening, right? This is why everybody has to take DMT hits and ayahuasca trips in order to feel spiritual. Because really what they're looking for is entertainment. Give me a high. Give me a, give me a hit. I want to transcend, right? Get me out of here. I want to see the colors. Oh, the colors. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm disappearing. Oh. You're looking for entertainment. That's what most people are looking for, entertainment. So when they go back to their prayer life and they don't feel something, they think that, they're, they think that this is not a legit prayer life because it's like, man, I'm just bored of saying this prayer. You pray out of justice. I want you to understand this too in terms of prayer. Men pray out of justice. What does that mean? That means that the creator expects your prayers because he created you and has given you grace to get thus far. Out of respect for and justice towards our creator, we pray. Not so that we can get something, not so that we feel good, not because it's fun, but because it's right. That's why we pray. We pray because it's right. It's right and true, right? Memorize some good prayers. Memorize some good prayers. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Right? So anyway, this, these are, these, this is... I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything, right? I'm not trying to tell y'all what to do, what to be. I'm just giving you my opinion on things. I think it's beautiful that the Catholic faith prays to saints. Y'all be praying for and with one another, but you forget those in the afterlife who have mastered this life, the saints, right? Pray to the saints for intercession, not worship, intercession, because they're, they've achieved the beautific vision, right? The vision with God, oneness with God. They're there with the creator. Give me a good word, right? Intercede for me, Mary, right? These are beautiful prayers. These are beautiful parts of the spiritual life. And I just sharing it with you, right? I would feel a void if I was going to a basic Protestant church too. Because that those churches, they rest most, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most, rest their value on the entertainment that the preacher can give from the stage. What kind of good music? Is it good music, right? Is he giving a good talk, 
right? Do they have Sunday fried chicken and mama's apple pie at the end? We getting together with the barbecue, right? It's a social club. It's a social event, right? Sacraments. And I tell you right now, staying in the state of grace through reconciliation, confessing your sins, paying your dues through penance, and receiving the Lord daily, that is the best way to stay in that state of grace, bro. I've been there. I come in and out of it. I must, I'm not a saint. But I know the power of it. And that's why I invite you to look at it that way. Look at it that way. Do you need to be a part of a church? Yes, to receive the sacraments. Not so that you can be partying it up and having a great time with Pastor, Pastor Cool Dude, right? And you say the only decent one near you is a Hispanic church? Those Hispanics, yeah, 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 they get it. A lot of them get it. They really get it. They're not too smart for themselves, right? Like the Europeans were, right? They, the Europeans outwitted themselves. They tricked themselves, right? With Martin Luther and all. He was so damn smart. So that's my opinion anyway, dude. I'm done. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.